and welcome to Early Years TV with me, Cathy Brodie. Today we're going to be discussing music and how it can be used effectively and used more effectively in our early years settings to add to children's development and community cohesion. I'm delighted to be joined today by Sue Newman Harriet Thomas of Boogie Mites. Boogie Mites offers early years families, practitioners and the wider community the knowledge, resources and confidence to harness the power of active music making each and every day. A very warm welcome to Early Years TV, Sue and Harriet. Thank you, Cathy. It's lovely to be here. Hi, Cathy. Thanks for inviting us. Oh, well, thank you both of you for being on. It's just amazing that you've managed to find time between you to actually come on together. I'm really pleased about that. Because today we're going to be discussing all about music in the early years and how it can bring the community together. But first of all, um, should we just start with why do we do music? What's the benefits of music to early years? So there's so much evidence that shows that active music making, so that's music making in which children are active, actively involved, so be it through movement, use of percussion, body percussion, vocalisation, role play. This this kind of active music making, when kids can participate in it, hopefully every day, really boosts cognitive development and particularly boosts language, literacy and math skills. But also, we, we all know, don't we, you know, when we turn on the radio and we listen to a song that we love, we start moving, don't we? We actually can't help it. We nod our head, we click our fingers fingers, we tap our toes, we literally have to move to music. And this means that music is a fantastic vehicle for physical development and physical fitness. And more than that, music is also a wonderful means of self-expression and emotional regulation, which means it's a really, really great tool to promote well-being. Um, so really, and it's not only children that benefit from that. We get fantastic feedback from practitioners who've done our training, who report back that, yes, the children are get, getting great benefits, but also staff morale and staff enthusiasm soars as the staff start to deliver really exciting active music making every day in the setting. So that's really, really great news for everybody. So music really is a full body and brain workout. It's fully inclusive. We can all join in with it. And it um, supports all seven areas of the early years foundation stage. But it's all very well talking about music, but music is really a thing you have to do, isn't it? So I wonder, Kathy, if you'd like to join in with me with a short song, and I hope all your audience would like to join in, just so that I can show some of those benefits in action. Yeah, How fantastic. Do you feel about that? that would be great. You'd have to teach me, though. <laughs> all, all the Boogie Mites songs are very catchy, very simple. Usually after a couple of verses, you kind of got them down pat, because mm -hmm. remember, they are for under five, so we try and keep them simple. Um, this song is called Let's Tap a Name. I'm going to actually get my rhythm sticks. I don't know if you can see those. Yeah. So these are a very simple prop. We actually make them ourselves. We make them from dowel that you can get at the DIY shop or you can actually get it online. And we've decorated them. You don't have to decorate them. But they make a lovely little sound and they're a fantastic literacy aid. But they're also really great for children who are a little bit shy about joining in. But as soon as they have sticks in their hand, they're away and they really, really will join in. So it's a great confidence booster as well. But you don't have to have sticks to do this song. You can also use your body, body percussion. So we've got our hands to clap. We've got our knees to tap. You can, you know, stamp your feet. There's a million ways you can keep the beat, tap the table, whatever you've got handy. It doesn't really matter. So this song is all about tapping out work word rhythm. So we're going to use names for this um, version. So I wonder, Kathy, if you can tell me how many syllables are there in your name? Ooh, uh, Kathy, two. Fantastic. So Kathy, one, two. Kathy, one, two. Fantastic. And I'm going to ask Sue as well. Sue, how many syllables in your name? I've already got one syllable in my name. She's got the one syllable. She's Sue. But if you want to, you can always spice it up with a little bit of alliteration. So we might say singing Sue. Uh, how many syllables does that have now? That would be one, two, three. Exactly. Singing, sing. Singing, sing. 
singing Sue. So there we've established uh, the syllables that everyone has in their name. And it's something you can go around the class with and have a little fun with. It doesn't really matter if children can't work it out. It's just a game. And then we're going to add in some movement because we've got to have the movement in there. So we're going to stretch up high. We're going to stretch down low. We're going to have a little shake. We normally do this song standing up, but we're going to do it sitting down. We can still shake sitting down. <laughs> and we're going to whisper. And we're going to shout. Yay! So those are the basics of the song. Now I'm going to start uh, by counting us in with a beat. So we're going to go one, two, three. Song. Yeah, so much easier now having done a song together to then think about, well, what are the children getting out of that? So the obvious thing is the literacy that's going on. I mean, just singing is supporting literacy skills, of course, yeah. but in that song in particular, we're playing with words. So the children are starting to think about breaking words down into their syllables or the rhythm of the words words as we call it in music and um, lots and lots of practice of that song will help them to start to visualize how that word breaks down into its biggest chunks and then of course the next stage is that they start to work with songs that we, we, we use that help, help them to hear the rhythm of the phoneme sounds in a one syllable word so they're then breaking the syllables down into their smaller chunks and the phonemes so that sort of links nicely into the guidance that, that we all follow for building strong foundations for phonics and the letters and sound, sounds are phase one guidance so um, that's literacy is happening right, right throughout that song there's also less obviously um, foundations for maths which are being de developed through just the patterns that we are repeating uh, with the verse and the chorus the sequence of the actions which the children will very quickly remember so they're starting to build a visual map of what comes next what comes next and it's those spatial reasoning skills that are so important for strong foundations for maths so lots of maths going on uh, there's also the physical uh, development with, with the rhythm sticks and the fine motor skills great for those all important writing skills and then we've got the gross motor skills being developed with the the high and the low and, and as, as Harriet said if we were doing that song standing up which we would with the children there'd be much bigger movements going on and um, then this when you're in a group with the children there's lots of social skills that are being developed and the children are learning to take turns they'll all have have their turn to contribute to that how are we going to sing the song today because you can adapt it to whatever theme um, maybe someone picks a the theme for the day it could be dinosaurs which is very often the first choice that we hear from the children uh, in which case they'll come up with wonderful names for dinosaurs we might have a stegosaurus tyrannosaurus rex you can get really quite advanced with uh, these uh, sort of word games once the children are practicing these activities regularly um, and then as long as all of those benefits are only going to be achieved, of course, if the children are engaged and they're paying attention and they're taking part. 
So um, that's where the recorded music in the background really plays a, a strong part. I mean, we're all adults. We've got a pretty good attention span. So we <laughs> managed to do that without the music in the background. But actually, the recorded music, um, and, and we write our own songs, and they will be playing in the background. And there's a very catchy tune, a strong, steady beat, because we know that strong, steady drum beat is really important for children's cognitive development, if they can keep that beat. So lots and lots of working with a steady beat. And there'll be uh, a, a really catchy melody that will stick in, in the brain. And uh, really all of those things and the movement as well makes it fun, makes the children want to take part and be engaged and therefore benefit from all those mm. sort of areas of development that are potentially going to be had from that activity. Mm. And, and lots and lots of practice. I will say I repeat that many times. <laughs> that is the Real key, lots and lots of practice. Mm, yeah. And um, just one other thing we were going to talk about when we think about benefits of um, music for early years development, uh, there is lots of evidence of those things we've talked about and many studies out there. What's really exciting and, and actually some in some cases quite new evidence is the potential that music has to close the attainment gap because it can give that boost to children that have perhaps had a more disadvantaged uh, experience and they need that boost for their pre-literacy skills, their social, behavioural, all of those school-ready skills. And um, I was going to just mention a couple of the sort of, uh, leading researchers that we follow. One of them is um, the Auditory Neuroscience Laboratory at the Great Northwestern University in Illinois. And the lead researcher there, Nina Krauss, you might have heard of her. She's done loads of studies um, and her team um, that are able to show that the strength of the auditory processing system is very important for cognitive function generally and literacy and language specifically. So um, that gives us the evidence we need to know that music is really important, particularly in early years when the neuroplasticity is at its highest, so we can really have the most impact. And also um, their studies have been able to show that music has an impact on refining the auditory processing system like no other activity. So it is really strong evidence out there that music could help to close this attainment gap. Uh, I'll just to mention Neat uh, Collins as well because she is constantly sharing the latest res research with the, the Bigger Better Brains community as she calls it. She's got a website in that name and a Facebook page in that name. And she travels around the laboratories in the world uh, talking to neuroscientists who are looking at and studying the impact of music on the brain throughout life and many of those studies are particularly relevant for those of us working in early years and she also concludes that music has the potential to reverse the cognitive deficit uh, from disadvantage and therefore this really you know exciting potential that, that we can hopefully help the children to achieve those children that particularly really need it use it as an early intervention yeah. Mm. yeah. And Anita's a lady that talks about um, it's like fireworks going off in your brain, is she? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. A, what a brilliant visual image that is. She, yeah, she, she actually has a TED talk, which I would um, recommend anybody to watch. It's called um, the What If Every Child Had uh, Music Education from Birth. And she shows within that a picture, a CAT scan of the brain and the, this fireworks effect uh, that music making has on the the brain when taking part in music yeah. and it's a really really fun TED talk you know yeah. so it's a really good watch she's very entertaining as well as very informative so yeah I definitely recommend that one and, and I did an interview with her via Skype actually she was in in uh, Sydney and um, that's on our blog yeah yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll put links to those so people can and go through and have a look. I love the TED Talks anyway, but yeah, I think that would definitely be a yeah. one to start off with and have a look yeah. at, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, so, Brilliant. so many yeah. benefits of music, aren't there? And as you say, from the whole from birth right through to right yeah. through to the early years, isn't it? So the other thing that I just wanted to ask you about then was community cohesion, because that's slightly different, isn't it? Why is music important for community cohesion? What do you mean by that? Well... Well, you need to think about music and, and really what it is. And really what music is, is an incredibly fundamental, ancient, probably prehistoric form of communication. That is probably how, music is probably how we first started to, to communicate. Many scientists now think that language is an offshoot of music. That's why we respond so naturally to music. We don't actually have to teach children 
how to respond to music, do we? We've all seen, you know, a little six month old child sitting on the floor and then you turn the music on and they're starting to rock from side to side and they're, you know, they're tapping. You know, we don't teach them to do that. It's natural. So really, we are all musicians in a sense because we all have that very, very deep response to music. Uh, but more than that, when we share music together, something very, very magical happens. So again, if you take that example of a baby, I'm sure many of us have had, have had the experience of rocking a baby to sleep. Um, you're singing a lullaby, you know, you've got eye to eye contact. The baby has no idea what you're talking about. The content, the, the, the vocabulary doesn't matter. You could be singing anything, it actually doesn't matter. What's important is the way you're singing, the, the tempo that you're singing at, um, th that is matching the rocking, and the baby is getting a lot of physical signs through the body, through your heartbeat. So probably your heartbeats are actually starting to be at the same tempo because you're so close. Uh, you know, and this is communication at an incredibly deep, deep level. And when you look around society, you see it absolutely everywhere. Wherever there are groups of people, there is music. So it could be groups of two, so a parent and child, uh, people getting married. Why do we have a first dance? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> why, do, why do lots of couples have our song? <laughs> when you think about it, why do lots of groups of friends have songs that represent, uh, you know, maybe a certain time they were together, like at university or something like that, or on holiday? Yeah. Why do large groups, so why do, it, why do football crowds, football teams have a chance? Yeah. You know, every single football team has its own chance. They don't share chance with another team. <laughs> they have their own chance. And when they sing those chants, that brings them together like, like nothing else. And however big or small the group is, it could be hundreds, it could be thousands, it could be millions, it could be a national anthem. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about this and I was thinking maybe we need a, a kind of worldwide national anthem to bring the world together <laughs> and then i started to think about that new was it the new seekers i like to teach the world to sing but, but that's that's really what it was about music yeah. so when you sing and we've all experienced it so that's what i want people to to just think about for a moment we've all experienced you know you may be in a choir you may be a football fan you may be a mum you've all experienced these special moments where you've bonded with a group using music, using a particular song. And that is where music bonds groups, makes us feel part of something, makes us feel togetherness. And all we're doing with Boogie Mice is we're using that power of music to create cohesion in the groups where we teach. So we're using it in nursery settings, we're using it in parent groups, we're using it in intergenerational groups. So partly we're using it to have all those developmental benefits that we've already talked about, but partly we're using it to really create a sense of belonging and a sense of togetherness, which is so fundamentally human and something that we all really need, especially in this modern world that seems very fragmented. So music, I liken it a bit to forest schools. You know, forest schools go back to something very fundamental in, in humans, which is a love and a response to nature. And that's very, very fundamental in us. Yes. And I think music, music is exactly the same. It goes back to something that's so deep, so fundamental, crosses cultures. It, it's just something intrinsically human and it bonds us together. And that's why we want everyone to be using music in their groups and, and hopefully beginning to, to take it out to the wider community. Yeah, yeah. And of course, as you say, that does start in the early years, doesn't it? That does start with that love of music and that confidence, I suppose, to sing yes. and to use your voice in those group situations as well. Um, but I'd like to move on just for a minute to um, how early years music trained practitioners can extend their practice 
um, through parent workshops and inter intergenerational sessions. I know you've just touched on that. Um, can we first of all start off with the, the, un the background to that? What's the independent research telling us about some of those things? Because uh, I know that you've had the Boogie Mites Early Years Music Education programmes for parents and practitioners. You've had that evaluated by Chichester University Early Years Research Team. So what was it that they found? What did they find when they did the research? Yeah, so that was, that was an amazing project project for us to be involved with. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, they were studying, as far as the parent groups are concerned, they were studying our parent education courses that are delivered across Hampshire under local authority funded um, adult learning contracts. I'm, I'm the contract manager, so I, I manage the project um, and we've, we've been, been delivering that for 10 years I think now. Um, the year that Chichester University University uh, got involved to do an evaluation. Um, they they had feedback um, from 296 parents. They did focus groups with 45 parents. They, they did phone calls three months after and six months after the courses, so that there was some indication of the impact longer term, not just during the six-week course. So it was a pretty substantial project. And there's a, there's a lovely long report that can be read uh, and, and a, a shorter executive summary, um, which can be downloaded from our, our website. I'm just going to pick out a few of the significant points that came out of that that are, are particularly relevant to what we're talking about today. Um, I think you, you just mentioned confidence, and that is such a key thing. And um, the report was able to state that all of the parents involved gained confidence through their involvement, which is really quite incredible because th these are um, run in disadvantaged areas. They are targeted families. At that time, we were working with the children's centres who were helping to recruit the parents for the courses. And um, that confidence is so key. And so to be able to show that they really gained confidence through attending and that they were practicing at home in a way that they'd never used music at home before. So where perhaps previously they'd used music for recreational purposes they might have had it playing in the background and probably their own choice of music maybe not so relevant for the children they now recognize the benefits of music for their children's development to actually get on the floor with their children to do the percussion activities the sequencing the progression and so um, they were actually doing that themselves one-to-one -one with the children they were also extending it to wider families and involving grandparents and, and, and friends and so on. And um, they were using, this because there was a CD at that time, it's now all downloadable of course, but in, it was a few years ago and it was a CD that they had to take home. And they were playing that at home and they were playing it in the car so that the children were getting exposure, much more exposure through this home practice, um, as well as hopefully the music practice they were getting in the nursery. And they were also, those parents were also able to perceive that their children gained confidence from participation in the project. So uh, again, that, that was quite a significant finding for us. They did comment on the style of music and they, they adults basically, parents, everyone loves the Boogie Mike style of music because we, we use modern styles of music, uh, jazz, reggae, calypso, rap, every style of music you could imagine is in there. And so that really helps to engage the adults. And they did, um, they did state that they didn't enjoy so much just the traditional songs and nursery rhymes, which we know are so important, and we do sneak them in there. But it was the recorded um, music for them that was quite an attention grabber and made them want to do it at home. So that was a significant finding for us as well. Um, there, on, on, on the side of sort of community well-being, they there was a finding that the parents made connections with other parents that were then continued outside the group and in some cases they became volunteers at the children's centre and supported the wider community in that way. So over and above part of the music group they were taking those connections outside and some some cases getting together as a group outside and doing music together with the children. So really, really lovely positive findings there. There was also the point that um, they learned about the EYFS because um, as we deliver the sessions, we are talking about how the activities link to the seven areas of learning. And so they were taking that understanding away. And um, the other finding that was, I think, more of a, a kind of a hope <laughs> was that by encouraging embedding home learning at earlier stage, there could become the precedent set that that 
home learning would continue as the children get into school. So it was like a, a real positive to really be able to show embedding of, of home learning with the, with the parents involved in the study. I just think that's such a really interesting range of benefits because you've not only got um, the actual music learning and learning about the UIFS, but also social socialising afterwards and getting together. That's that is far beyond the, the reach of a normal music program, isn't yeah. it? That's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how would you, if you were a setting, thinking that sounds fantastic? How would you start that? How would you set? How would you encourage parents to find out about music and and understand the benefits? Well, we, we do um, really encourage the nurseries that we work with to take that brave step to run parent music sessions. So um, even if it's just what, once a term, they can bring them into their setting. Um, but where, through the local authority contracts, we used to work with the children's centres to recruit parents, we now work direct with the preschools and the, the nurseries and, and the primary schools and uh, work in a community location nearby. But And what we can see is that those earlier settings have such an opportunity to be able to um, open their doors to parents. And, and many of them are doing parent involvement. But what I would say is music parent involvement, for all the reasons that Harriet has just said, is so powerful for bonding people together. And um, it, it's just a case of having a go and practicing, which makes perfect. Um, uh, you know, obviously, that getting launched with a bit of training and, and the resources um, which are out there and we can help with, then really it's it, it's such a, a great role that the earlier settings can play in, play in the community. And although I know they're so overstretched and so much work on their plate, I just feel like it, it, it would be a great priority, not just because Ofsted would like parent involvement, but also because it's only going to be the benefit of that nursery school, of the of the primary school, of the local community, if they if their parents are getting involved, building these support networks, maybe coming in afterwards as volunteers, getting to know the staff, and doing the home practice. I mean, that just benefits the whole community at the end of the day. Yeah, I think that is so interesting, isn't it? That it could stretch out then into primary, into secondary as well. It's not you're not just holding that within the early years. That will go on, won't it? If they've made strong friendships and so on they've taken it yeah, back yeah absolutely. yeah yeah wow fantastic mm -hmm. so i'd like to move us on now to the intergenerational care and the intergenerational sessions that you hold um mm -hmm. what are the benefits of that how would you start with that sort of thing well the intergenerational uh music workshops are basically bring participants together from different generation in shared music making. So it sounds pretty simple. It takes a bit of organization, really. Um, I mean, the model that we generally use for the Boogie Mites Intergenerational Programme is to have an early year setting, children from an early year setting, visit a care home or um, a day centre where there are older people. Um, we then found that the same boogie mites mix that we normally use for children works in this uh, intergenerational uh, context. So we'll still be using the upbeat songs, we'll be using the same props. Um, obviously the older people just love having the children there, that really gives them a boost. Boost. But also, you know, we've really found and got a great lot of feedback um, from practitioners in, in care homes that they really see the older people um, moving more than they would have had, would have expected. Going back to what I was saying, we literally have to move to music and it just really helps to have those props as well because at the end of the day whether you're three or whether you're 93 you're just a human being and you know you may be shy to participate so for anyone who's shy to participate if you have a, a movement scarf it just kind of makes it easier to get going or if you have a shaker or if you have the rhythm sticks so it's been amazing. I mean, the intergenerational music sessions are fantastic to attend because you really see the older people joining in and doing things that, you know, you, you're like, gosh, I didn't know they were going to be able to touch their toes or, you know, click their fingers or stretch up high. Suddenly they're really making big uh, motor movements. And it, it, it's really fantastic. But also what's great is with a skillful facilitator, through some very simple directions, 
um, the younger children can really be encouraged to socially interact with the older people, which actually the children do quite naturally. But if they are asked to, for example, give out instruments or, or, or take the instruments back, you know, it just allows for that little interaction where the kind of ice is broken and so people start talking and you know so the the interaction happens and it you know they're really really magical actually they're, they're, they're a fantastic relatively new for us uh, development but but it, it, it it's really they're really magical to attend they, they really are they're fantastic As I, it sounds absolutely amazing doesn't it and um, it must be really really good fun for both the children and for the older people yeah. as well but how do we know that actually works has that ever been evaluated as a music session we're very very lucky to ha have now had some of the intergenerational um, sessions that we run in Portsmouth evaluated by an independent uh, freelance community musician called Liv McLennan now, Liv is kind of at the cutting edge because she is actually doing her PhD in intergenerational music making. So we're really, really lucky to have her do this independent evaluation. Liv was looking at two outcomes in particular. So she was looking at well-being for everyone concerned, and she was also looking at community cohesion. So what she concluded was that the Boogie Mites intergenerational program, which was a six-week course, really provided a catalyst for um, increased community cohesion. So she noted that one of the nurseries started to open their doors more to families, bringing them in for specific events where they mixed with the older people in, in the care home. She also noted that another care home carried on the music beyond the scope of the Boogie Mites project. So that was great. So they were still bringing the children in and doing their intergenerational sessions. She noted uh, increased uh, well-being for everyone involved. Uh, and also, as a kind of, she wasn't actually looking for this, but what she also saw, what came up as a consistent result, was an increase in confidence. Yet yeah, again, this confidence <laughs> is just coming up again and again. So an increase in confidence and social skills. And that went across the board. So with the older people, with the children, with the early years practitioners, with the practitioners from the care homes, and with the parents who were also attending. So from our point of view, what was amazing was that the early years practitioners and the practitioners from the care home both agreed that they had really gained a lot of confidence enabling them to lead music sessions uh, in their settings. So again, again this was a really a real win for us because you know we, it's really part of our mission to extend music making and shared music making kind of everywhere <laughs> so whenever we get the news that that people have gained the confidence to lead music sessions we're just like well that's that's uh, it's kind of we've done our job right <laughs> you know people are starting to realize that yes they can do it you know um and, and I guess that brings us back to the Boogie Mites mantra, which is, is, you can do it. You know, I mean, we know from, from the, from just seeing how people are with music, we know that the biggest thing holding people back is confidence. Yeah. But we know that, that you can do it out there. You know, all of you practitioners, you're already using music, but there's so many ways that you can actually extend your music practice. Um, and I'd love to, if I may, give some tips. And the first thing that I'd say is that, you, look, I know everyone is busy and, and everyone's up to here with, with kind of things they have to do when you're working as a practitioner. So what I, my first piece of advice is start with what you know. And what you know is, you, you know, you've probably got a core of nursery rhymes and children's songs that you sing every day with the kids. Awesome. And I would say start with those, but let's extend them a little bit. And a really, really great way to extend them is by using some simple percussion. I just wanted to show you some of the percussion. We have literally been using the same percussion kit, the same three items for over 20 years. Well, not the very same, we've made more. But, <laughs> you know, basically the same music kit we've been using for 20 years because it really really works and it's a DIY music kit so little uh, story when I started Boogie Mites 20 odd years ago I had literally no money and so 
I couldn't buy any any instruments, so I made them. So these drums are actually made out of SMA cans. Don't know if you can see yeah, that. that. Yeah. So uh, they're just made out of SMA cans, which means they're, they're incredibly sturdy. They have a great message around reusing and recycling. Uh, parents can be involved because you can ask parents to bring in any cans you've got at home, bring them in. So again, you've got some parent involvement. And they just make an excellent drum. You can either use them just with your hands, or if you've got the sticks, you can use them like that. Now, I know that there's practitioners out there thinking, Harriet, you must be completely joking. I've got 15 kids in my class, and when I bring 15 drums out, it's, it's going to be complete chaos. It, it's just going to be mayhem. No one's going to be able to hear what I'm saying, and, I'm gonna, and it's just going to be a disaster. And it, it would be a disaster, except that my first tip, is when you have your drums, which, which is really an, an easy, an, a quick and easy win, you have to do the start-stop game. And that's the first thing you do. So if you can make with your class drums for every child, then at a certain time, at music time, you bring the drums out and all the kids will start banging away. And that's fine. You've got to let them bang away because it's cruel not, not to let them bang them away. Because, you know, I just think it's cruelty to children. Children. If you give them a drum, they've got to drum it, right? Absolutely. But then as soon as everyone's got their drum, then you go, stop. And it's amazing. They will actually stop. And then you, stop. <laughs> stop. So that's the first game that you play with your drums. And, it, and you know, I don't need to tell you all the, the, the benefits that that game has in terms yeah. of social skills and so on. But then you can take that a little bit further. You can use a song like I Hear Thunder. You can ask the children, well, is thunder loud? Is thunder soft? And they'll be like, hopefully they'll say thunder is loud. So let's make a loud noise on our drums. I hear thunder. I hear thunder. How don't you? How don't you? And then you're going to ask the children, well, now we've got to the raindrops bit. Are raindrops loud? Or are they quiet? What do they sound like? So you might be able to get some descriptive vocabulary around raindrops. And raindrops are quiet, so we're going to try and be raindrops on our drum. Bit of the raindrops, bit of the raindrops. I'm wet through, so are you. So, you know, it's just such a simple way that you can, you don't have to learn a new song. You don't have to buy a new CD. Just need to make some drums, which is quite easy. As soon as practitioners have drums, you do need one for every child in the class. You'll think of a million ways to use them. You know, you, you can march with them, sing the Grand Old Duke of York. I mean, you know, once you've got them, and the kids love them, you know, so they'll want them out at, at every opportunity. Uh, so drums, rhythm sticks that I talked about earlier, and the last thing, which I'm sure everybody already has, shakers. That's all you need. That's your basic rhythm kit. With that, you can extend so many of the songs that you already use and really get those active music benefits. So that's my first tip. My second tip is it really helps to know on a basic level why and how music is such a great learning tool. You know, it helps to know a bit of the neuroscience and it helps to know how you can link your music making to the earliest foundation stage. Because, you know, let's face it, when you're a practitioner in a setting, you need to have that evidence, don't you? You need to tick your boxes. And, you know, there's so much you can do with music, you know. It, so practitioners need to know that they can actually link their music making to specific early years goals. So I would ask uh, practitioners to go to our website. You can download our free guide. So it's a a uh, practitioner's earliest practitioner's guide to music making. It's a it's a quick and easy read. It's a great bit of CPD that you can share with your team. And as I say, it just goes through some of the neuroscience, helps you understand why music is so important. Once you understand that, you'll be like, we've got to use this every day. And again, helps link with the earliest foundation stage. So that's my second tip. My third tip is another free resource that we can offer you, which is that song that I sang earlier, the Let's Tap a uh, Name song. Uh, if, again, if you go to our website, you can download the song. So that means you get uh, an MP3, you get a video of the song be being delivered in a setting, which is really helpful to see how the children react to it. Um, you get the teacher notes that links it with the earliest foundation stage and with Lesson Sounds Phase 1, and you get the lyrics. 
So it's a little music activity you pack. Again, you can share it with your team. You know, once you've started extending your the songs that you already know, you're going to want some new songs. So, so start with this one. It's free, which is always great. And it, it, it's a song that we have used for years and years and years and years and years. And you can adapt it to any theme. It's just really fun. You know, you can use it with the music. You can use it without the music. You can use it when you're sitting having your tea. You know, it's just one of those those kind of go-to songs. So, you know, I think with those three things, practitioners will really feel, you know, they're really starting on their journey of being music leaders, you know, which is what they can be. You can be the music leader. You know your children. You know what stage they're at. And you know where they need to boost and where not to boost. So you really know them. So, you know, we, we really just want earliest practitioners to be the music makers in their setting. It's a step-by-step journey, right? I mean, it's a big ask to say, go out there and lead an intergenerational music session. I mean, that's a big ask, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So it's a step-by-step journey. You know, so start with the baby steps and before you know it, you will be thinking, actually, you know what, I want to I want to invite parents in. I want them to see what, what we're doing with the children. You know, I really want you they want parents to see that. And and then, you know, the practitioners, you know, you might start thinking, you know, I would love to connect with a care home is which is just down the road from us and this is gonna give us a great way to do that. So, you know, that's what we hope. We hope people will think in that way. I think that'd be really nice if you could go to a care home and not just say, oh, I want to do intergenerational things with the children. But actually, we've got some really great music that we can play together and that we uh, to actually take something to offer as well. I think it's a yes. great thing to do. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. The evaluation study does give some, some tips for how to get started with um, intergenerational music sessions. For instance, the importance of that upfront agreement so that both sides are really clear about what it is they want to get out of it and what they're going to put into it. And they're both committed to it for all the right reasons. Um, and and uh, a few other points that you can, again, read that about that uh, evaluation report via our blog or down, and download it from there. And um, it, it's, again, about being brave and uh, having the confidence to have a go. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. And you've mentioned there that your website, so what is the name of your website there? So it's www.boogiemites, which is B-O-O-G-I-E-M-I-T-E-S, boogiemites.co.uk. Fantastic. And you've got, you've got a YouTube channel as well, haven't you? So is that Boogie Mites as we well? We have, yeah, exactly. You could just go to YouTube and search Boogie Mites. Uh, I think the website and the YouTube channel are a great place to start if you want to find out a little bit about how we work. Yeah, and of course, it's for Facebook users out there as well, there's also a Facebook site which has some lovely images on there. So that's a really nice scroll through on Facebook as well. But wow, yes. I just think there's so many great things you can do there. Thank you so much, Harry and Sue. And I, I want to take that message away that, you know, be brave, do that music. This is brand new pedagogy, isn't it? So let's, let's do this together. Yes. Thank you so, so yes. much for sharing all of that on Early Years TV with us today and some great top tips there as well. Thank you very, very much indeed, Harriet Thomas, Sue Newman, for joining us on Early Years TV today. Thanks, Thank Kathy. you. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I look forward to welcoming everybody to Early Years TV next week. <laughs>